doing well, son. Father. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you, Amar. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? I let you down. I, I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. And someone has to live and carry the torch. That's for the sword. It's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. You did what was right. I have to leave you now. Oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud. were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobs. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. <laughs> Get out of here! Or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. God save you, Henry. Good day, Henry.
How? Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Capon. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Margrave Jobst was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. Question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How they changed, your grace. Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the imperial crown, in return his brother would help him become the king of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the imperial court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas' journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst, Wenceslas and Prokop behaved rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop, too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. 
the worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Bleh. People like him, though. <laughs> but what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Burgolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Burgolf is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course, the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> Partly due to my efforts. And now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgov would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I pack my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobs and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? Hmm. Oh, what is it really the issue? So what do you think of it all, Sir Divish? We need to I think I don't know what to think. That makes two of us. If, I... if they'll make trouble or we'll join our So, side. it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes. I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. Very well said, sir. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be traveling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Burgoff tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father.
and don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. What is their stance on my... Very well. Bergov is at Trotsky Castle. I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? I'm getting a bit lost in the Luxembourg lineage. It all seems a bit too tangled. The Luxembourgs have ruled the Empire and Bohemia for almost a hundred years now. Emperor Charles brought this land to prominence. When he was in power, things have never been so good. Wenceslas and Sigismund are his sons, but by different mothers. Jobst and Prokop are their cousins. They were entrusted with governing Moravia. But instead, they've been in a bitter armed feud for years. And now Sigismund's fallen out with Wenceslas. Wenceslas also had another brother, the youngest, John of Gerlitz, who was most probably poisoned. They seem like a hot-blooded lot. It's hard to keep up with their affairs since they tend to change their alliances from one day to the next. The League of Lords and that Burgoff we're off to see. Who are they exactly? The Lords of the powerful houses, Heinrich of Rosenberg, Otto of Burgoff, Heinrich of Raditz, and others. They're unhappy with the way their influence declined after Wenceslas surrounded himself with the lesser orders of nobility. They abducted the king years ago and made him bow to their will. They got away with it that time, and now they've joined forces with Sigismund and done it again. But now it seems that Sigismund's behavior is starting to rub them up the wrong way. So they may well be thinking twice. We'll see what Burghoff has to say. I don't know all that much about Sigismund. He's the king's younger brother and king of Hungary in his own right. Seven years ago, he led a crusade against the Turks and was defeated at Nicopolis. Some say it was due to the recklessness of the French knights, most of whom were mercilessly slaughtered. Sigismund is ambitious and capable. He might well make a better ruler than Wenceslas, but he's arrogant and to our misfortune, brutal. Not long ago, he himself was held captive by the Hungarian nobility. They dislike him as much as some of the Czech and German noblemen do his brother Wenceslas. Ironically, Wenceslas joined forces with Jobst to liberate him. And now this is how Sigismund repays his brother. There's no doubt about it, God does move in mysterious ways. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush. And good luck, son. So what do you think of it all, Sir Divish? I think I don't know what to think. That makes two of us. If I didn't know anything about the arts. I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary, where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but... Slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians, quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. 
But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlet's. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burkhoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. Hey! The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? What do you think of Master Kizo? I've already asked him to stay on here when this is over. His ideas are incredible, even that trebuchet. I can't wait to launch it. Sounds like you're sorry not to be the siege master. Who knows? I may still get a chance. Be a bit more careful. So, can we set off now, Henry? Of course. I can't wait. So, to horse. The Lord of Burgov is bound to be waiting as eagerly. Party, Henry. Can we go? Are you ready for this? Of course. At last I'll get to see more of the country and have a bit of an outing. Quite. Let's get to it then. I finally have the feeling we're doing something worthwhile. We're helping to save the king. Instead of saving his drunken majesty. I'd rather find that horse than who murdered my parents. Get the sword back from him and skewer him with it. Cheer up, Henry. I have a feeling you'll get your chance one day, and it won't be long in coming. Forward, men! Our dentist for Duna, you must!